this is, this is, this is. All right, you've reached the very end of November. We are headed into December, the last month of 2022. I don't know if I'm excited or indifferent. I don't know. I'm good. I'm good with it. I'm fine with it. I accept my fate. Um, this year is about over. It's been, it's been a weird year. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's been weird. There's been weird times and there's been great times. Um, we just got back from Chicago and Milwaukee. Those shows were awesome um, last week. Um, last week I was not able to really talk about it because I had recorded, pre-recorded before the shows and you get my drift, right? So if you've been sleeping under a rock, you just showed up, let's listen to the podcast. I haven't heard it in a while. Well, a lot has been going on. We, we released vinyl. We really, you know, we played some shows. We released, um, our black Friday slash holiday gear. It's all in the store. Our 30 year anniversary gear is in the store. It's all up mxpeaks.com. And I have been, I not just me, but I've been at the forefront of all your mail orders. You know, anything you guys have been ordering on mxpeaks.com, my hands have been in it. And and I'll take some of the faults too. There's some screw ups here here and there, but for the most part, it's been awesome. We we see a problem, we work through it. Um, had some some great team members, and uh, so yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been great. So thank you guys. I appreciate you. We are still going. Still got orders going out, but uh the bulk 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 of the the big orders we had are all done. They're all good. So, if you haven't received your order, you should very soon, and if you still haven't and you know, you can always email us. All right. You can just go to your email on your order. There's a pretty obvious uh little blurb of what to do, I think. <laughs> all right guys um i i'm doing my best over here and i think it's it's it hasn't been bad <laughs> it sounds like i'm making excuses for myself but really um it has been such a wave of learning learning curve but also just we're back we're back busy we're getting it done we're making it happen head down on the desk get deep into the work and and it's been great. I, I've been so busy, I haven't really had any time to make videos. I mean, and you know I'm really busy if I haven't made any videos lately. So let's get into it. I wanna do some voicemails, I wanna answer some questions. And of course, if you guys want to ask a question, maybe you have a topic you want me to cover, you just want me to blab for a while about something, please call me 360 830 Six 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 zero. Leave me a voicemail. <clears throat> Make sure you know what you want to say because it's only a three minute limit. So would love to hear from you, ladies. Come on, give me a call. Three six zero eight three zero six 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 zero. Put it in your Rolodex. You can call me every week. Leave me a message. We'll talk about it, guys. Same thing. Put me in your Rolodex. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's get to our first caller. First caller, here we go. Oops, uh, I did not hit the right button. First caller, here we go. I remember whenever you first started your... Okay, was it, was it, was it? I remember whenever you first started okay. your uh, theme song, uh, and you actually played like the whole thing. I was wondering if you could do that again. It, from what I remember, it was like... It's a punk rock radio. It's a punk rock radio. No, I know that you said radio in it, but yeah, it's that. It was done pretty cool. I think you should play it out. Thanks, dude. I think the front of your message got cut off because I, but it didn't. You know, it did and it didn't. That's all I got. Um. Yeah, that was, you know, that was the first part of, of uh, the theme song you hear now. It's like I wrote lyrics to it and I like wrote not a full song, but I wrote like a little bit more. And it was just, I kind of was just like, that's too much. People don't, people are going to get sick of that real quick. So that's the reason why I didn't use it uh, much. But hey, I don't want to disappoint. So let's, let's find this thing. This is, uh, you know. Obviously, a really weird, rough, terrible mix of this original 
theme version of this punk rock talk radio. Yeah, this is punk rock talk radio. Back to chat it up with the guests for an hour or so. Listen to us here when you gotta get ready to go. Yeah, this is M. There we go, there we go. All right, so check it. So that that's the that's the theme. And the reason another reason why I didn't use it is, is because originally it was for the Mike Herrera Hour, which uh, used to be called the Mike Herrera Hour because I was on Adobe Radio and it was an hour long program. And so I was like, okay, the Mike Herrera Hour. Um, but originally. It was my career podcast, and then when I was with Adobe, it was my career hour, and then after I left Adobe Radio, I went back to my career podcast. That's it. Cool. Um, that's kind of a fun little theme. I like that. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, I don't think I'm going to continue using it, obviously, but um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's, uh, let's get to the next caller. Hey, Mike. Todd here. I am a longtime MXPX fan, more recent podcast fan, first time caller. I don't think I've ever seen MXPX perform live, though I was at Cornerstone a few years when you might have been there, but I was a youth group kid at the time, and I'm pretty sure my youth group uh, decided to go see some other people, sadly. (laughs) I had life in general back in high school. It was really one of the early albums that I ever purchased for myself. Sadly, one of my buddies, I loaned it to him and I never got it back. Mm. Maybe that's why uh, I just, I ordered um, the autographed copy of the vinyl from you guys. Thank you. As far as a question, I know that you've been pretty close with Five Iron Frenzy. I'm a big ska kid. You know, what can I say? Um, (laughs) I love that you've been doing stuff with Goldfinger. Um, And, you know, but growing up in the Christian scene, I was a big Five Iron fan, Insiders fan, Supertones fan. So I wondered, do you have any stories from ever being on shows or events with the Supertones, the Insiders, other Christian ska bands other than Five Iron? Uh, Joe from the Insiders does a podcast with Reese, and Joe claims that you probably don't even know who he is. So also, do you know who Joe is? Anyway, um, have a good one. Thanks for the podcast. Thanks for the music. It's inspiring me. I'm learning to play guitar myself right now, actually. And I've been watching a lot of your life in quarantine videos. They sort of inspire me with what I'd like to do on guitar someday. Anyway, thanks. Uh, peace out. Thanks, Todd. Very cool. Um, you know, yes, I know who Joe from the Insiders is. What's up, Joe? Um, we haven't played with the Insiders as much as we played with Five Iron Frenzy and even even um, the Supertones, the OC Supertones. We we knew some of those guys pretty well. Um, you know, Tony, the bass player, we were pretty good friends with. Um, you know, but there were th- there were some rubs back in the day, like with the OC Supertones, because they were doing a very inv- evangelical show. And we weren't, I guess, you know, we just weren't, we were just like, we just want to be a band. We're just going to do this thing. And, and, um, for them, it was a little bit more, it was more of a, like a mission, like a missionary mission kind of thing. And so we definitely rubbed a little weird with, with the OC Supertones on, on the tour that they did with us. Cause they were doing things like, they were just like taking over our set time and like we'd go on super late because they were just taking over the set. It was like things you would not get away with doing today. But back in those days, the shows weren't really run professionally. They were just 
some random person wants to bring some bands out and they have enough money, they, you know, and it wasn't even that much money, you know, back in those days, a couple thousand bucks and, and you've got yourself a show. So yeah, that, that was, there's some fun times back in there. Um, ska in general though, like, I mean, I, the first ska song I ever heard was Propagandi, Ska Sucks. So uh, I've got a love-hate relationship with it. I do love ska. I love plenty of, of, of uh, the music that, that ska bands play. Uh, Op Ivy, definitely one of my favorite punk bands. And another, you know, when I first heard Op Ivy, I didn't know that was ska. I didn't know that was punk ska or what that was. And, um, but, you know, it's got that energy. It's got, it's got the, it's got the culture in the music and the lyrics, you know, it's got all that, um, that, that, that thing that punk rock really latches onto. Ska is part of that too. Ska is part of the punk scene. Whether you like it or not, punkers. Uh, but yeah, uh, we we played with Real Big Fish a lot over the years. Um, some of those tours have gone really well. Some of those tours, uh, not so much. I and mean, we did a tour with Real Big Fish where, at the time, I think just ska kids hated punk. Like it, it was, uh, they were rejecting punk, and so their fans hated us. Uh, our fans totally liked real big fish no problem no problem at all because you you fans are not assholes <laughs> so you know there's been that over the years but you know you just get you go through it and you learn and you you kind of like i do i look back and i i can laugh about it because uh you know those times were great times you know we had some fun times some fun memories and you know even the oc supertones bits it's like ugh, whatever we were all kids we were all just trying to do our thing, you know, and, and, and sometimes you do your thing and that rubs somebody else the wrong way. And, and that's okay. You know, I mean, it is what it is. I don't know if it's okay, but it is what it is. So, you know, no, no hard feelings, of course, but it is funny to, to think back on some of those early, uh, Christian ska shows or not even ska shows. They were punk shows with ska bands on, you know, ska was part of the punk scene. Like, so, so it wasn't like there was a ska show and a punk show. It was just, there was a show. Um, sure, you can call it a ska show if it's only ska bands, things like that. But um, there's a song, there's a couple songs I've wrote like little ska parts in. The one that comes to mind is Falling Down, Falling Down off of Teenage Politics. It's just got this little ska break, which is something that like, Goldfinger might do, um, now that I'm in Goldfinger, I kind of know that, you know, playing, playing bass in Goldfinger, but, um, I don't know. I think, I think it's really fun to just add a genre in, add a, a thing that a certain band might do a lot. And then we've never done, you know, just add that in. Boom. Here's a little part. So Todd, thanks for calling, man. Uh, Cornerstone, sorry you missed us. You probably saw somebody way more hip at the time i don't know maybe maybe they're more underground maybe we're we're coming up too hard and uh too fast for the the group you were with i don't know but uh i'm glad i'm glad you finally uh got the vinyl and uh hopefully you can come see us or come see us play again soon i know you're in florida so we'll we'll get out to uh we'll get out there sometime i don't know where or orlando is where we were, were next time but saint pete is always fun we love playing uh st petersburg all right let's get to let's get to the next caller thanks for calling todd all right what's up mike josh miller cincinnati ohio uh first off i was just listening to the halloween episode i gotta say hi to gabe from tulsa gabe from tulsa is a sick freak sick freak Long time friend of mine from cornerstone anyway <laughs> cornerstone, uh yeah. picture this it is cincinnati 1995 i'm about to go to my first punk rock show it's I'm sorry, Surf Cincinnati. Had on my best work shirt, looked like I was a car mechanic, had on my best baggy jeans and my airwalks and my beanie, and I convinced my dad to drive me all the way across town to go see MXCX play. So we get there, and the show was canceled. The rumor was that not enough pre-sale tickets had happened. I don't know. I was like 15, no, 13 at the time. Uh, being 13, I knew nothing. It was my first show. I was angry because I had to end up uh, eating it like Bob Evans with my dad and his best friend from college. 
<laughs> instead of seeing my favorite punk rock band, really the only punk rock band I knew at that time, play. So I heard a rumor years later that an after show slash house party ended up happening in lieu of said city show that uh, my dad would never have let me go to. But nonetheless, uh, I have deep regrets about missing that. And I just wanted to know if that's true, if you even remember anything about that. Um, that's all I have to say. Once again, Gabe from Tulsa is a sick freak. He's a great guy. Josh from Cincinnati, out. Josh from Cincinnati, I love your call. Gabe, what's up, sick freak? Um, I have a feeling Josh Miller is a sick freak. Josh Miller from Cincinnati. Sounds like a sick freak, man. I'm so sorry that that show got canceled. I don't I don't really remember the details on that, to be honest. I'm trying to think of Surf Cincinnati, and I wonder how big that place was. But depending on the year, um, I mean, it's possible. I, I, don't, I don't really... We haven't done too many shows in our career that have been canceled due to low ticket sales. Now, there's been plenty of shows we've done that have had low ticket sales, I'll tell you that. But usually not so low that it's utterly embarrassing. There, there's, you know, we've dipped down into utterly embarrassing in our career. We have. We've been there. Um, and we may be there again. But And I feel like I'm strong enough to survive that too. I'm not, I'm not going to worry. But, uh, man, you know, I don't remember Surf Cincinnati. I don't remember the house party. Um, I know we've played venues that are in houses. <laughs> uh, there's this, this like old strip club that turned into a venue that MX Peaks played one year. Um, this was a long time ago, a very long time ago. Uh, I just remember the stage was a catwalk. It came out like that. It was like, okay, this place really was a strip club. We've played a lot of former strip clubs and we've, we've even played clubs that are still strip clubs. Um, thinking of some small town in, in Russia. We played this place on a tour and it was locals only for sure. Like definitely like, I don't think we had any actual fans. You know, there was, there was probably a few that were like, oh my God, MXPX. But for the most part, it was just people like excited that a, a punk rock band or a rock band was coming to their town. And we played, we played their local club, which was also a strip club, a steakhouse, um, a birthday bar mitzvah hall, like everything, right? It was it was pretty crazy. Uh, all right. But yeah, that's that's uh I don't remember, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry that happened and uh we can't hurt you now. We can't hurt you now. We're <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna cancel uh any more surf Cincinnati shows on you. But hey, you got that quality meal with your dad and your dad's friend at Evans burger joint or whatever it was called all right next caller hey mike uh tom bowman here from upstate new york a uh, long time fan first time caller um one i want to say thank you so much for the years and years that you guys have given us music um it really helped me through the hard times and all that good stuff um i had two two questions first question is well to go back is um, I remember seeing you guys play multiple times. I'm from Rochester, New York, and I remember seeing you guys play um, Water Street Music Hall a bunch anytime you were in town. And then um, the one time was at the Harrow East Ballroom in Rochester. Um, I believe that was with the Hippos and No Motive. Um, going into what my question is going to be is when that show started, when you guys actually came on stage, I was in the front row, and the crowd – just pushed forward and actually it got two of my ribs crushed um, against the barricade and I, I, I sucked it up I took the pain I watched the show it was an amazing time um, so I guess my first question is, is have you guys ever or do you remember any instances where a fan was seriously hurt in the audience um, mm. you know whether that means that the lights had to be turned on and you had to stop the show and somebody had to get carried out I'm um, just curious in that aspect and, and I guess if it there isn't any that you remember um when did you guys if, i'm sure you guys have gotten hurt on stage so mm. maybe during a, a base throw between you and you know one of your guys um just curious on that second question um i also make custom nike themed shoes that don't really ha you don't have to have the nike swoosh but i make custom shoes called bolaires 
Have you ever thought about doing your own MXPX Poconantia themed shoes? I know you have the flip flops and you had lots of them, but have you ever thought about doing custom, you know, high end um, handmade shoes? Let me know. Love you guys. Keep up the great music. Can't wait for the new album. Thanks. Dude, Tom, thanks for calling in. Dude, I'm a fan, dude. I, I follow you on Instagram, Bolaires, and that's a trip that you're calling in. Thanks for calling. Um, no, never really thought about it. I guess I'll think about it now. Get back to you. Um, you know, about the high-end shoes. That's just, you know, it's just another project, and it's something that um, if if people really showed interest in wanting, then we'll, we'd look into it. That's usually kind of how we get started on outside projects. Um, you know, we, we do collabs with Silver City Brewery for our beer. And, um, you know, it's just a universal kind of thing. A lot of people love beer. Not everybody. You know, some people prefer water, soda, whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's something that I definitely uh, am open to for sure. Now, I'm sorry about your first question about, you know, fan injuries, on stage injury. That's going to be fun too. But uh, I'm glad that you stuck it out in the pit in Rochester. Um, ouch. Yeah, that can be really painful. I'm just thinking of something that happened to a friend of mine. Uh, two of my friends were at our show, MXP show in Seattle. And this was just a couple of years ago. This wasn't like way, way back in the day. Um, but one friend had been to a show and the other one was sort of seeing us for the first time in many years and was up front and we were about to go on and, and one buddy's like, Hey, you don't want to stand there when this gets going. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'll be all right. You know? And sure enough, as soon as we started, the crowd went crazy. And, and my, the friend number two is like, get me out of here. You know, I barely got out alive. Like obviously MXPX pits aren't as insane as, uh, you know, a tool pit or something like that. But, but, um, but yeah, it gets crazy in there and, and you can get crushed just like that. The, the, the weight of the crowd can just crush your little ribs and, and uh, it happens. So now to your question, um, and I'm glad you're okay. Glad you're okay. You got to take care of yourself out there. If people do get hurt, feel free, you know, go, go see the medical, the medics. You know, there's always a medic at every show um, that we do. As far as I know, I mean, I've, I've always seen them. Um and so, so let me think about fan fans getting hurt. Now, obviously, we never want fans to get hurt at shows. We always want people to take care of each other and take care of themselves, take care of their kids. Um, it doesn't happen as often as it as it used to, I think. But back in the day, something that happened that was kind of our fault was Yuri threw his sticks at somebody and like hit somebody in the face, you know, and like, you know, broke their skin, like that kind of thing. It's like, oh my God, okay, I'm not doing that ever again. Another thing that happened was I stepped on a girl's finger on the front of the stage. So so on those small punk clubs, a lot of times there's no barricade where it separates the stage from the audience. So you can just be right up on the stage and you can put your drink on the stage, you can put your coat on the stage, you can put your hand on the stage and we played a lot of those stages. Every now and again, we'll still play a stage like that, uh, depending on the venue. And it's a little more dangerous. I mean, it's a lot more dangerous. Let me be be clear. Um, so a girl was just having a good time, put her put her hand on the stage, and I was just jumping all over the place, and I came down on her finger. Ah, she was still a fan for years and years after that. By now, I have no idea. Maybe not so much, but... But she was still a fan for years, and I was like, "I'm so sorry." And and back in those days, you didn't you didn't just automatically sue. I would say that's stuff we learn, you know. And you know, just like uh, just like being in a pit where you could get your ribs crushed, that's something that that I don't really think about you most of the time, and it could just kind of come up all of a sudden and happen if you're at a show and you're not paying attention. So. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, until you experience the crushing weight of a crowd, you just don't know. You just don't have the capacity to, to know and to be careful about it. So, um, yeah, we live and we learn. Tom, dude, huge fan. Uh, love what you do. Um, thanks for the call. Oh, I, I need to tell, talk about onstage injuries, too. Um, 
on stage injury. We've had plenty, plenty, nothing huge. I don't think anything like nobody's broken anything. Um, I've sprained my ankle three times in one show. Rolled my ankle, rolled the other ankle, rolled the the second, you know, the first ankle again, the third time. Um, I've done that. I almost died one time at the San Diego County Fair. We we're playing in the inside area. I don't know if it was the county fair. It was just one of our shows, but um, it was the exhibition hall or wherever the big hall was. They used to do shows and doing our thing and. I like just kind of just freaked out and I was just going crazy and I like fell and land and started falling with my head towards the center of the, of the barricade. So the barricade and the stage, and then in between is security guards, but on the floor, it's all cement. So I was falling down and then at the last second, a security guard caught me and my head stopped about less than a foot from the concrete floor. And I saw my life, my life flash before my eyes. And I was like, holy moly, what just happened? I almost died. Like, I definitely would have been in the hospital, could have died, could have, you know, whatever it is, right? <sighs> so, like, that kind of stuff happens now and again. Um, a mild injury similar to that, but nowhere near death was with with Goldfinger. I was in, in, in New Jersey at the Starlight Ballroom. Um, this was a couple years ago. And it was the last song, 99 Red Balloons. We're going crazy. I trip. There's a, there's a small road, road case about this tall, like less than a foot, like half of a foot tall on the side of the stage. And on the, on the other side of the side of the stage is the monitor desk. And there's all these cables going from the monitor desk to probably a snake where you put all these cables in and, and they go to, go to where they go. And, I fall back, I land in the netting of the cables. I land in the cable net of this console. And I'm just like stuck there with my bass and I couldn't get out because I'm playing still. I'm like playing while I'm stuck on the net of cables. Like the cables that are literally plugged in for the sound of this show. And as I'm in this cable nest, None of the sounds going out. Like I'm not unplugging anything. That's how delicate I am. I'm like not moving. And finally we end the show and I get out and I've got my pants are all ripped up. And yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. So I'm sure Tom and Yuri, Yuri's got a really good one. Actually, I'll just tell Yuri's and, and, and we'll get to one more voicemail. But Yuri, it was in Budapest, uh, Hungary, Budapest, Hungary on the Vans Warped Tour in 1990. 99 let's say 98 99 somewhere in there it was um it was our first european warp tour and detot and hosen and bad religion were the headliners we were just kind of you know one of the bands on the on the sh on the show on the tour and we start we're doing our whole set to have our set we get to the end punk rock show playing punk rock show and yuri all of a sudden stops playing and we're like what is going on da, 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 da. and then he starts playing again but not very well he's playing very badly and uh we just get through the song and uh what happened was after the show yuri's telling us he's like all of a sudden i'm playing and poof, the side fill which is the monitor for the drum the drum monitor the side fill just lands on my arm and my arm goes dead I have no feeling in my arm. I can't move it. It's hurt so bad that I just can't move my arm. And so it's dangling on my side. And I just kind of regroup and I start playing with one hand, playing the rest of the song. And just, I'm in pain the whole time. <laughs> and uh, after the show, uh, one, of the, one of the sound tech guys that's like, you know, in charge of like doing the set changes, plugging things in, moving speakers around, he goes, oh, yeah, I thought that was going to happen eventually. <laughs> and right, in, right to Yuri. Yuri's like, yeah, yeah, it happened. Like on my arm, jerk. You know, so things like that, you just, it's hard to foresee. But then again, you, you see that people foresee it and they don't do anything about it. <sighs> Such is life. But, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, 
We've played some shows where we've all had food poisoning, been puking, that kind of thing. Go off stage, puke, get back on. I think it's happened in Denver. It's happened in Houston, Texas. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. I think it's happened in, um, in uh, ah, where was it? Malaysia, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I had a, a pretty bad bout of, of food poisoning. It wasn't even food poisoning. It was it was not being used to the local um, bugs and cuisines and things like that. But that was a, a good time. All right, let's do one more for you guys. Thank you so much for your calls. Looking forward to, to more of your calls. Hey, Mike, what's going on? It's me, uh, Joe from St. Petersburg. I called a while back. Uh, hopefully hmm. you can hear me. I'm on my roof sweeping it because of the past tropical storm and hurricane Ian we had recently. Um, anyways, I forgot to mention last time, I didn't know if you go on your uh, your Facebook fan page, but about a year ago, I got the MXPX Darth Vader logo tattooed and I posted it. So uh, that was me that got that with the uh, Death Star in the background. But I wanted to mention that. And also, I didn't know if you uh, are a fan of the Foo Fighters, but they recently had a Taylor Hawkins son um, got to drum with them to uh, Everlong. And I thought it was a really cool moment. You know, he did just as good as Taylor did. And, um, my question was that if your ch- kids ever learned your songs or were interested would you ever allow them to play a show or play on stage with you guys or if any of the other band members kids ever learned a song would you allow them to play with you guys on stage at a at a show anyways i hope to see you guys at a show next time you're in florida i will show you my tattoo in person and uh hopefully get a picture with you guys and find an autograph or something like that but I'll talk to you soon and hope you have a good one. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, man. Uh, I did see that Darth Vader tattoo. That's awesome. Looks so good, man. I can't wait to see it in person. Hopefully we will be back, like I was mentioning earlier, back back to Florida at some point. Um, Taylor Hawkins, man, such a sad situation that, that he passed er- so early, so young, and left behind a, a beautiful family. And it was amazing to see those those tribute shows that the Foo Fighters did and you know, it does make you kind of think about what if it was me? And the answer is absolutely. If my kids want to play anything that I do, want to come up, come up on stage and, and jam on a song, they are welcome to. And, you know, I don't want to hold my breath, but uh, I, I I can't wait for the day that something that amazing happens. Is You know, it just seems like that's just part of what, why we do music is, you know, we, we do music because... It makes us feel better. It gives us a, 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 a deeper meaning to our lives, but it also makes us realize what's important in our lives. And, and usually, you know, that's other people. You know, if you have, if you have other people in your lives, um, that, that's what's important. If you're, if you're rolling solo, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that either. You know, we're all different. I, I love being alone and I love being with people. So it's like, man, I, I, I like to appreciate both. So, Having my kids come up and play would be would be something that that would be just unbelievable. It would be unbelievable. It'd be like, okay, this is things I thought about actually coming true and happening. You know, when you when you when you have something so so seemingly like surreal actually happening for real. That's that's got to be that you know scene. Taylor Hawkins' son, you know, and, and, you know, it reminds me of, you know, moments like this, the song, um, you know, with the line, you know, will they look up to the sky and think about me, you know? And you got to think, like, Taylor Hawkins' kid was probably playing those drums and thinking, of looking up and thinking about his dad, you know, and it's, that's heavy. That way is heavy, but... um you know, life is short. Life is precious. You know, I I hope everybody has um, a great last month of the year. Um, holiday season is is upon us. 
it is what it is. Let's enjoy it. Let's try to slow down a little bit. It's hard because, you know, we just keep going faster and faster in our lives in this culture. But, you know, if we can if we can get what we can get done, but then s- sit down and take a second to just think, take a second to appreciate what we have and what's been done for us as well, not just what we do, but what's been done for us. You know, I, I got a shout out to my parents. Um, they've been, you know, I'm, I, I should have said this for Thanksgiving, you know, but I hate, I hate being so cheesy, but uh, my parents, you know, if I was going to do one of those Thanksgiving appreciation posts, it would have been, I'm thankful for my parents and I'm thankful for, you know, when, when we were sitting down at, at, at Thanksgiving dinner, it was my family, my parents, and it was my my sis, my younger sister, and her 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 kid and her husband, so her family. And um, you know, everybody said you know what we were grateful for, and we're all like, yeah, family, family, family. It's all we we agree. Family is the most important thing, and and it's like that's what you have to say, right? Not not my soccer ball is the most important thing, or my football team, or whatever, you know. But um, it's what I wanted to say, but for the, in the interest of not taking forever and not, you know, whatever, but I wanted to say, I'm grateful for my parents, my, you know, my mom, my dad for helping never say no for doing all that they do for, for their, not just my, their son, for their two daughters as well. But they've been not just this year, not just last year, they've been my whole life in my whole career of, you know, being playing in this band MXPX, they've been helping MXPX. Um, now they don't, they're not like tech savvy. They're not Hollywood celebrity savvy, showbiz savvy. They're just there to facilitate what it is their kids need. And, and that to me is, is pure love. And it's, it's a great example of what being a good parent really is. And so I'm, I'm thankful and I'm appreciative of, of my two parents. So if you're if you're a regular from the store, please give them a shout out in your next order, maybe in the notes saying, "Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Art, for for all that you've been doing for the band and for the mail order." So they they would love that, and I'm sure I'm sure anything else you want to write that's positive and uplifting uplifting would be would be great. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for anybody that does think about it. Um, and if you think, if you forget and you think about it later and you didn't do it, don't worry about it. Don't, you know, don't trip out. Um, yeah. Thank you guys. All right. That's it. Uh, this is uh, this was a great episode. You guys, I appreciate you. Thanks for the calls. If you want to call in, you know, the number, if you don't already, it's in the show notes, but I'll tell you here, it's three, six, zero, eight, three, zero, six, 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 zero. Leave me a message. I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about, and we'll get through it together. Um, I hope you guys liked Un- Unstoppable. We played it uh, at the shows, and it was so much fun to play that song. It's such a good song. It's a cover by the Planet Smashers, and if you don't know the Planet Smashers, speaking of ska, they are one of the best ska bands around in the last 20 years. So they're from Montreal, Montreal, Canada, and uh, they definitely don't get enough record recognition they're they're great they're really great right great songs put on a great show and uh they can speak two languages french and english and maybe even more than that i don't actually know so um all right you guys bob mcknight shout out to bob and his family the bob and katie show is a podcast he does and you can get that anywhere you listen to podcasts he does a patreon so if you get in real deep with him you'll start uh start supporting him Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I would love you to. Um, all right. That's it. MXPeaks.com. Thank you for your orders. Thank you for, for your support. And uh, happy holidays. Stay tuned for some news. We have some more this year. This isn't the very last thing you're going to hear from us. All right? All right. Peace out.